Your brother told us how you be all into reading this shit. Hey, that's some real good shit. Congratulations. Did you just congratulate me for reading? You know who it is, Existential Cap, coming live uh, out here in cyberspace with my man, Polly Cap, Print Caps. Um, yeah, I mean, what we're doing out here, uh, we've been wanting to do this for a while, you know, we haven't uploaded to the channel in a bit, had some discussions, uh, so I thought, hey, let's try something new. So I moved all the way out to uh, California, specifically San Diego, and... Um, I uh, was living in Minnesota before with uh, close to my boys, uh, Polycap and, and Jose. So we haven't had a chance to like do this in a while, like in physical space. So I've been like, I've been a big VR person for a while. You know, actually Polycap's the one who made me get it. We went to that uh, uh, Black Friday sale. I was like, yeah, let's get it. And I fell in love with it. And I've been trying to get everybody else to buy it. <laughs> so we can have hangouts in VR and stuff because I really think this could be a, re a new you know kind of thing where if you get if you're far away from your friends you can still like hang out watch TV together have conversations and be like right here you know and it's a little bit more enhanced so, like you can have the video big as hell right here you know you could have discussions so I thought hey if there's a way to do this with just one person in VR, I have Polycap in the corner right up here. And yeah, we can have a discussion. So uh, yeah, leave the introspection crew back again. Um, I think yeah. next time we'll get Jose on this. Oh, you can feel uh, The drone effect? Huh? The oh. drone effect. Oh, right. Yeah, we can. Uh, we can yeah, maybe over, take um, my handy dandy tablets here. Let's take a little B roll. Um, yeah. So no, that would be the B roll when you're talking about in this VR space. It will kind of just like spin around and show all the screen and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so um, here is next camera, you know. I'll show you how, how we live living out here. This is what I see. And. Um, Oh, that camera's retarded. <laughs> uh, do the drone effect. I know. It, it cycles through all the different cameras. Oh, there we are. Oh. Uh, yeah. So, you see how we are here? We have you know? the, ether, the nothingness, the, the all, the one. <laughs> we go and everywhere at the same time. Right. So... <laughs> This is the perspective of gods. <laughs> it's heart music. I love it. I love it. Just from the back. Yeah. And I mean, can you imagine this stuff in the future? And it's like perfect with all the existential crazy stuff we're always talking about. Feels like a trip, you know, I'm in a different reality right now. Uh, really? Literally. So here we are again. So, I mean, it's been a while. What, what have you been seeing in your reality that you know you've been wanting to discuss um i know it's been a couple of things we've we've chatted about um let's see so, um oh some definitions right um the so kevin came up with this idea of layered reality in the sense that um this reality that, you know, the physical reality where we used to hang out when you used to be in Minnesota um, was he called base reality because it's the physical reality in which we have so far existed within. Um, and, you know, as you know, he was kind of exploring VR and, you know, I kind of watched, I was part of that experience somehow, um, you know, he ended up terming uh, the virtual space as the, you know, a, a reality added on to it. What was the word you used, Kevin? Um, we have base reality, and then we have like, I was going to say secondary reality, or <laughs> I think we always talked about base reality, but you know, True, we, we have really, all these. Uh, you know, I think my 
Yeah, and then we have virtual reality, right? You have virtual reality, based reality, and <laughs> and it's it kind of goes back into our uh, our whole culture series um, talk last time. You know, when we were talking about surface detail, because holy shit, you know, this is the this is the beginnings, <laughs> right? Imagine when this stuff is like just so real, and I have a neck, and like my body's in here and stuff, and. Look at how far my arms spread out. Like, is that how my far my arms are in real life? I feel like <laughs> it's not. But um, yeah, so I thought, man, this is gonna be crazy, right? How will you know, you know? And it comes to, I think what I've been thinking lately is, you know what? After spending all this time in VR um, and spending time in base reality, um, I've come to the conclusion that there's no way you could tell. Uh, <laughs> how could you possibly tell which one you're in like right now it's cartoonish and it's like easy you're like oh yeah this this doesn't look real right um but we're getting there and i think i shared with you that cgi um and obviously cgi has to do with movies but you could easily see cgi coming together with virtual reality and making these freaking crazy real experiences right and so the further you go down that rabbit hole you're like well if if virtuality just gets better and better to the point that it's indistinguishable. And I think I, we've talked about, I mean, we've heard Elon Musk talk about this stuff, right? The first time I heard Elon Musk talk about this, I was like, this dude is high. And um, <laughs> now after like actually being in it and like actually spending some time in some games where you start kind of losing yourself, because like if anybody's ever played Echo Arena, um, or just, uh, was it Lone Echo? Just the game even. They give you a whole body and they can track your arms and stuff. I'm like, yeah, we're not that far. Like, I can see in our lifetimes where we come out with a VR that is literally, it feels like, it, you know, you're, in, you're living in it, you know? Especially, I also did research when I graduated from college on prosthetic limbs and stuff and they've gotten to the point where you could just connect that to your brain. So if you could do that with VR. So that makes me feel like, you know what? We have to be in a simulation already. It has to be. <laughs> like Elon Musk said, there's like a minuscule chance that we're in actual base reality. And, <laughs> and then, you know, like it's way higher that we're not. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I did want to come up with like some videos. Just hey, let's assume this is not base reality, and just make some new theories based on simulation theory. Like we assume that we're definitely in sim in a simulation, and then we go forward. Like what? What does that mean? How do we? How do we kind of take advantage of the simulation? Uh, to or do we have any? You know, maybe we do. But yeah, how do we take advantage of the simulation to have different experiences, you know? Um, so if I'm getting you right, you um, in a sense want to be able to kind of um, drive the, the idea or the concept of the thought or the thought experiment of whether we live in simulation and if we do um how can we use that to our advantage right how can we create a simulation where it absolutely reflects um some of the values that uh it, the, you know we as a people have um and so kind of showing people and using this medium as a way to be able to really um exemplify and drive home the point that you know, when you're in VR, and, and you know, there's this movie called uh, 2047 uh, Revolution. Uh, I think it's 2047 Revolution. It's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, the Virtual Revolution 2047. Um, and it's on it's on Amazon Prime. And that's kind of where I saw it. And, yeah. they, you know, in it, they talk about uh, it's a revolution that's happening and it's about the virtual world. But I think I've mentioned this to you uh, towards the end of it. And it's a huge, it's kind of like a huge spoiler. But um the, the the main character basically um says that 
in the beginning of this century, um, which is this century because it's 2047. So during our time, uh, there was experiments which were done, and this is true, that um, they kind of put people in a VR. Uh, so they gave them this VR headset. Uh, one of the experiments was they gave them this VR headset and they, they had the people put like one hand um, on one side and put the, wait, no, 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 that was um, like a phantom limb. Uh, have you seen that experiment? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the guy, they hit it with a hammer <laughs> and he yeah. still feels the pain. Yeah, that's crazy, huh? <laughs> and, you know, so there's, there's multiple, um, but the, the movie eventually brings it to this point where it's, um, the there was this other protagonist who wanted to free everybody from the virtual space, right? Because... You know, people have decided to retreat into VR to escape the problems of the real world. And that's what um, Ready Player One also like tackles. Um, I, I feel like this movie, uh, the 2047 virtual revolution, is always so trying to talk about the same problem here, where you know, it always kind of felt like VR is a good tool, but as smartphones have kind of shown us, some humans will get absorbed by it. They'll get addicted to it and, you know, because, you know, VR will give you those experiences that you have always wanted to have, you know? If you, mm -hmm. if you wanted to, like, you know, go skydiving without putting yourself at that risk, you can use VR. If you wanted to be, like, this, you know, millionaire philanthropist or, you know, the, or the mansion, you know, whichever your wildest dreams are, you could be that in virtual reality. And they talk about that in Ready Player One and why people would gravitate to that, you know? Definitely. And I think the kind of theory I'm proposing or going forward with is that assuming we are already in a simulation, then um, that's already true. And there's like, I don't know, there's no fucking exit button from this. Like, I don't get a menu. And uh, so when you, when you propose that stuff, like people being addicted to VR and stuff, I felt like uh, yeah, that is a real danger, especially like if we're going to assume this is base reality and then, you know, we start going with all this. Like, I remember when I saw uh, Inception the first time, I was like, oh my God, if we had that technology, if we had a way to like just dream like that, I would not fucking do anything. I would just like do whatever I can to stay in, like just sleep all day and, you know, be these different characters in my dreams and have all these adventures and I wouldn't give a, I wouldn't care about, you know, normal life, right? And um, so, I, I mean, this summer, I think I had a crazy experience where I felt like I had this weird feeling that my normal life was like that. So, um, you know, once I started, you know, having, entertaining the idea that maybe my base reality that I think is base reality is a simulation, then I started acting like it a little bit, um, where I would, you know, where if something, I think I've told you those stories where I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to go to San Francisco. I, lo I lost my, uh, my, my Airbnb just, you know, uh, yeah. canceled on me. You know, I'm going to go anyways, because I'm the main character in this VR and it's just going to work because this is what I want to do. And things, the universe will just form itself as my feet as I keep walking along, you know? And especially when we saw Ready Player One, I was like, holy crap. Like when they're walking and the ground is just forming, I was just like, whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> taking that in, uh, in like whoa. seriousness, I went to San Francisco and circumstances just happened in a way where I got to stay at a hotel free for a week with like the best, like it wasn't even a crappy hotel. It was like a really nice one, you know? And I won't go into the details. I've told you already, you know, if anybody yeah, wants um, to know, maybe in the comments. But, uh, yeah, and the, I had a couple of things happen like that. So I was just like, then it started freaking me out where, you know, it's kind of funny. It's kind of fun to be like, oh, well, yeah, we're in a simulation. Blah, blah, blah. And then you start feeling like you're in a simulation. You get freaked out. You're like, what the hell is real? You know? So I started appreciating um, things that went wrong. Like I, I was like on this, on this wave of like things are always going right for me and I'm like living this bliss. And then it started like freaking me out that things were going too well. 
And then so things started going poorly. And, you know, some things, you know, just didn't line up correctly how I wanted them to go. So then... You just freak yourself out, bro. <laughs> I know. And then I, I feel like, is it me? Maybe because I got, you know, freaked out and I'm making it happen? No. But, like, even if, even if that case, the thing was I made certain plans and had certain assumptions and they didn't work out exactly how I wanted them to, Right. And I realized, even if this is a simulation, the fact that the system creates stories in that way and creates circumstances in dirty, messy ways where it's not like, I want this, and you get there. I, you're going to, uh, from point A to point B. It's like point A to point B has all this bullshit, <laughs> you know? That's what makes it real, you know? The, the fact that that stuff doesn't happen perfectly it might as well be, you know, like you don't, it, it gives you at least a feeling that you don't have as much control as you think you do, even though you might. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. really I'm tricky to talk about here in VR <laughs> as I manipulate <laughs> everything to my will. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I agree with you. I, you know, Hey, so today I told, I told this woman that, um, she shouldn't let her fear, because she said that, I asked her, what is she afraid of? And she said she's afraid of being successful, you know, like everything that she's ever wanted coming to fruition. And, mm -hmm. you know, at first that might sound like, oh, really? But, okay, that's weak. Um, but most of us live with that same, like, fear. I do, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, for sure, you know? dude. And um, so you, when you kind of, sorry, said you no, no, you're right. Oh, explain. I like because see the thing was uh, I was kind of going through the same thing too. Like she was just manifesting. I got like a new Android job. I was happy, and I was like, "What? This shit is going good. Yeah. Why and is I'm it going too well? <laughs> <laughs> I've been struggling, dude. You were struggling to get that shit for so long, and then once we started talking about all this stuff." Everything just happened. Like, it was just like, Android job, boom. Uh, car, boom. Do, you know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell? It was like, we cracked the code to the simulation and, and stuff started happening too well. I was like, I'll go to, I'll, go, I'll just quit my job and go to California and live on the beach in a nice place. And it literally happened. I'm standing right next to the beach. It, I mean, not right now, but like, you know, I live right next to the beach in California, in San Diego. And that's something like I... I like just imagined, you know, and yeah, it's really trippy <laughs> that when, when stuff starts happening like that, even though it's like the best thing, it freaks you out. <laughs> True that, no, I feel you on that. Um, Real quick, I wanted to see if we could change. Ah, oh, we can't. <laughs> the background? Yeah. Then it confuses the it confuses the window. Or maybe we can change it during the next one. Oh, there we go. <laughs> We're back. Yeah. So okay, I that that helps. So now we're in uh, this crazy. It's one. Of, I, I like. I like this. Uh, I like this uh, environment, but if anybody doesn't know, this is an application that you can get on a couple of systems, uh, Oculus and the Vive. It's called Big Screen. As you can see, I have a big ass screen behind me. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Wait, uh, oh, a go ahead. So, um, with the same ease of um, big screen to switch between different settings. Is there uh, an application in VR right now that can generate worlds, like rich, detailed, alive worlds that you can switch between in you know, such settings? Uh, for example, you see where you're standing right now, like uh, the way I'm envisioning this kind of experience would be that the clouds would be moving, uh, you know, through the screen. And oh, through. yeah, yeah. You know, that's what I've always wanted to, like, uh, I don't know. You know, it, it's kind of funny because big screen, 
um, there was a time when they were looking for developers, and I probably not a, I, I mean, maybe, anyways, people, if anybody doesn't know me, like, I, I develop, right? We're both developers. We've done this stuff. So I hit up, like, I hit him up. I was like, oh, my God, I want to be on this team. Like, I have so many ideas, you know? Um, but they didn't, they didn't get back to me, sadly. I mean, I think it's because they, they wanted people who were, like, a lot more experienced with VR, and I haven't, you know, even though I'm a big enthusiast, I haven't really delved into, like, the code and all that stuff yet. I primarily do, you know, Android and stuff. But, um, uh, yeah, I, yeah, these, these environments are really static. Um, however, you know it's possible because... Um, Oculus is doing it, you know? When you've seen Oculus Home, and Oculus Home has the, uh, what do you call it? Um, their, their, their environments move, right? It would, be, it would be really cool. I don't think Oculus has those tools to let you set up cameras in the rooms, but if you ever got a VR, then we could, we, they, they've set it up so you can hang out together Although I'm not sure if you can visit rooms together, I think that takes too much processing. But what I've not what I've noticed is that um, uh, they do have a marker. The more stuff that you put in your environment, and and the more things, the more processing power it takes. You know, so they tell you it's like a limit. Like things are gonna get really fucked up in your vision. You know, like your environment will get too. You know. It would start getting uh, janky because we have too many items. The problem you're setting. It is the problem of object permanence in virtual realities. Would you call it permanence? Yeah. So, like, it's the it's because it's um it's the ability to have enough memory to be able to um simulate an object in digital reality um uh, in the in the in the in the amount of detail that is needed to simulate that, product, that, that, that object in, in a way that it gives its lively sense. Like, I'll give you an example. Let's say we have an object like a, a, a grass, right? Like a plant of grass, right? Um, it, it will take, uh, it takes a bit of memory to have it there, but it also takes even more memory to simulate it growing and, and the whole life cycle of a grass, right? Right. Uh, and, and so, you know, I kind of understand what you're saying. Um, I don't know if you're gonna bring this up, sorry, I, I cut you off, but spatial OS. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We you shared that to me and um I thought that was pretty cool. Um I I mean all that stuff it's been showing like how closer and closer we're getting to real life. <laughs> so it, it, it's it's really trippy though. Like I had to, <laughs> this week I've been thinking about it and I've just been like how the hell do I wake, like, if if I'm doing all of it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is it based on me? Where, like, I, I, I wanted to just tweet this out and just randomly just be like, every night I go to sleep and I wake up in the morning and so much shit has happened <laughs> without me knowing. Can you, like, there's a whole backstory to all the items in our environment. You know what I'm saying? Like if you take a rock, you could if you could track it. There's probably signs on it where it came from. There's all this stuff, you know. And yeah, I mean, of, um, like oh. how they build in history printing, which does this whole concept just brings me to the idea of um, the um, sword art online. Uh, That's the I one mean, I wanted to talk about next. If I could pull that uh, up. There's also a movie called Lucy by Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. When she activates her whole entire like brain, um, she could basically like pick up a rock or something and go back in time and simulate or at least perceive or, or recreate or under or like or perceive um, the history of that rock. I mean, you know, you obviously you you, you can be able to do like things like you know, Checking the carbon print on it and, and seeing seeing where it started and, and kind of uh, looking on Google to see you know there's ways you can do that I see it like not that hard right um, so I was a big fan of uh, sort of online when it first came out after that like a few 
of the iterations after that kind of sucked, um, to be honest. <laughs> and um, But this one is a lot more interesting because now you do have the same protagonist, but he is put in a VR where he loses his memories, right? Because the other one, he like the first one, which was really good, he knew he, who he was, right? But this one, he loses his memories, but he knows he doesn't belong there. So I thought that was really trippy. Um, and they talk about uh, how they, the company who is using him in this VR, they wanted to, they, they had this problem of the, the NPCs that they had in there. They're trying to create like real artificial souls, I guess. Like they call them fluct lights, fluct lights. I don't know why they call them that, but like basically consciousness. But they saw that all of their, um, the, uh, the NPCs were way too, way too uh, obedient. Like they would set up rules and they would never break them. They would never like try to think about the best, you know, alter, you know, like. Uh, let me, let me help you. Um, so I think what they were trying to accomplish was building AI that is conscious, right? And they right. have that in the virtual reality space to be able to grow and raise these AIs into, you know, into being able to have the, the data and the understanding that can help them uh, navigate and help us solve problems in the real world. You know, there, you know, it wasn't that though. Their, their, um, their task was a little more diabolical. They wanted to create AI that can kill, you know? Yep. So that, like, actual uh, for use of uh, soldiers. Um, so because the AI that they had, you know, you want the AI to be able to um, uh, operate in our normal day, in our normal everyday thing without breaking rules and knowing, you know, like reading the atmosphere, you know, reading the air about every situation and what's okay in this situation. But uh, the AI were, like, being way too obedient to the hard rules, like the basically like the commandments, right, of the Bible. <laughs> so I started thinking it was like a parallel with uh, with the Garden of Eden, and basically Kirito is kind of like the snake that they <laughs> they introduce in there. And even though, uh, but like it's kind of weird when you think about it now because Kirito is like this good guy or whatever. So you start thinking like, okay, if this is like the same as the Eden story, then. Was a serpent the good guy? You know, he's trying to help us like, hey, dude, why do you listen to everything God says without questioning at all, you know? Yeah, isn't so, um, yeah, um, Kirito um, helps them make their own oh, decisions. Yeah, there's an actual game like that. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Jose brought it up in our top five. Yeah, Jose's going to be mad, bro. He's going to probably comment on this and be like, you fools, I've said this so many times to you. Ah, jeez, ah, jeez. I saw, they came out. I saw it on VR the other day. I was like, this is going to be a really good VR game. Jeez, why am I forgetting it right now? <sighs> It'll come to me. It'll come to yeah. me later. Whatever. But, yeah, this is like a puzzle game where, yeah, I think we did talk about it on our top five. Uh, but, yeah, so it's kind of the same idea, which is really trippy to me. Um, <laughs> what do you think? True. I I like I like the show actually. Like I, I want to see how they resolve that. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, uh, it's really important to. I like how much that show really merges the two things that we are talking about. We've always talked about. Um, and even in like my timeline, I added. So I didn't just add building like desert cities. I added building desert cities, water cities, um, you know, aerospace cities, like air cities. Um, and then the last one was like space cities. But I also included virtual worlds. Like, you know, rather than just building like cities in base reality and physical reality, building cities and environments and worlds, entire worlds in the virtual space. So giving people, because Oh man, I've been working so hard, bro. <laughs> um, to build such a, a like, it's telling a story, right? It's kind of like what George R. R. Martin, or like any good author that 
we have read, um, especially like surface detail and the culture series. Um, it's it's honestly it's building a world and having the details within it to be able to convince not just yourself but other people that this is this is a world that is going to come to fruition. This is a world that is going to exist. And I so, guess uh, for anybody who watches this, if you want to give a quick, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're right. You know, rundown on what you're working on because you kind of pulled it out of the blue. Uh, <laughs> you're right. Um, what am I? So, what the what I'm basically working on is a, a way for conscious beings to experience to to harness different kinds of experiences. Right. So, in simpler terms, I want to create. Um, uh, a company that creates products and services that essentially help uh, conscious individuals or any type of individual. Uh, what I use in that, in, in, so I'm making a website that explains all of these things. And what the terminology I use in the website is that what I'm trying to build is a way that sentient beings can interact uh, and experience different aspects of reality to their choosing, right? So they get to decide what kind of world and reality they want to exist in, and then they go and inhabit that, right? And so, you know, that's kind of why I build in physical cities, but also virtual worlds. It's kind of the space that we're going to get into. And, you know, I'm talking about real cities here, not any figurative or, or you know, or you know, abstract cities in, in that sense. I'm talking about literal cities with giant of buildings and, and, and people living within them. The, the, definitely, I took a lot of inspiration from the culture series books, um, you know, and even before that, it was just like a passion that I've always had. And so that, in simpler terms, what I'm trying to build is the ability for conscious, sentient beings. So not just humans, but even when like AIs become um, sentient and they're being of their own right, um, I want them to be able to decide what kind of experience to have and, and to, to go to specific locations in space and time to have those specific um, experiences. Is that going to make sense? And it could be your wildest dreams from traveling to a new solar system to, um, you know, just building uh, an entire mansion on the side of a building or on the side of a mountain. Um, it, you know, like 12,000 feet up in the, you know, above sea level or, or owning your own planet, you know, right. like that. and so, yeah, you know, sorry, I don't want to ramble too much, but yeah, that's, that's essentially what I'm building. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, uh, I mean, obviously it sounds really lofty. Um, it depends. I wonder if there's restrictions in, in base reality that we've set up the limitations, um, you know, allow for, it sounds like something that would take multiple iterations or generations even of, of tries, you know? Kind of like uh, with Elon Musk, he obviously has some really lofty goals as well. You've just explained something that is even beyond. I mean, I feel like if Elon Musk goes, like, gets something on Mars, at least a little way station, he can die happy. But <laughs> you're talking about and as well as building cities, also, also building um, VRs. And, you know, like, I think that kind of stuff is inevitable just because I, I, a lot of it, that's the way it's going. You know what I'm saying? We want to be spacefaring. We want to have uh, simulated, uh, simulated, you know, experiences and stuff that we can just push button have. Um, and uh, what, what was the other thing? I, you know, there's there's so many, and, and we want to become the best versions of ourselves. Um, uh, you know, you always talk about your assistant and stuff like that. Although you might have to make a virtual reality one, <laughs> people might be more more interested in making their character the best instead of making their person substrate, <laughs> like you know, to their maximum. But it'll be interesting when you have to divide your consciousness between two different realities. Which one are you going to be more, you know, can you really, yeah, can, can you really give it your all in a virtual reality and then go uh, back to your base life and, you know, 
it'll be it'll be really interesting. These are problems that will spice it up. You know why why not? <laughs> um, no, we were able to have a uh, high ability to be able to adapt. Mm -hmm. um, definitely being you know, and, and that's kind of why you and I are really important in this transition is to be the not just the pioneers of these kind of things, but also the spokespeople to be able to explain and kind of bridge that 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 gap between people's expectations of what these technologies could do and you know how soon that can happen. Because when when I'm talking about building entire cities, the first thing I have to do is have um, with lack of better words, a virtual reality um, experience of it that is totally generated from the, the physical, like our ideas, our concepts. So, you know, when we're talking, when I'm talking about building a desert, desert city, I obviously have in mind technologies, um, you know, specific milestones and, 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 and things that we have to create on the path to that. I don't think that, you know, I'll wake up one day and I'll just create it in one day. I think, you know, it'll take me um, a couple of decades to be able to accomplish those things. but. Once I have those ideas in place, I think with the virtual reality, and I kind of mentioned this in our previous um, conversation, is the reason why I will start with building virtual reality worlds is so that I can test out these these concepts um, with physics engines that are similar to how our world is. It's kind of it's literally. I think exactly definitely a lot of people will be using it like that. I've seen a lot of uh, applications on Oculus already for like. Um, you know, architecture and all that you can download and, uh, you know, simulate this stuff. So definitely people will use it. And there's a lot of, you know, doctors are using it to practice uh, doing surgeries and stuff before they do it on a patient. It, I, I think it would be nice if, um, if virtual reality kind of fed into making our, you know, base reality um, a, a more interesting one, you know, be more effective, you know, all that stuff. Um, although I think it's also inevitable that people will be sucked into this in the way that you're sucked into video games or even your own thoughts. I think the first virtual reality is your own head, right? You have all these fantasies and stuff that you daydream or even just regular dreaming. I think VR is kind of like a, <laughs> a waking dream in a sense. It, it's it is pretty trippy you know when we we're talking about how you know all these rocks and objects have their own story in real life um i find it a really fun exercise to think about how could you possibly have that work in vr you know um how could you have it so whenever say you your player or in your environment someone goes and pays attention to this specific thing that it has a whole backstory. Like, this place has been here forever. You know what I'm saying? Um, be, and I realize that that's the way it works in our base reality that I think essentially how it would have to work is that um, when you go and interact with something, the simulation or, I mean, your simulation has to create a whole backstory for it right there. You know what I'm saying? And if you subscribe to the, the it's kind of like the fact where if you're playing a video game, the, the resources of the computer will only be used to render what you're looking at, right? And it will only, it's only when you turn around, like if you turn around, you know, the shit behind you starts becoming, either it disappears or it becomes less detailed, right? And when you put your attention and conscious attention on this part again, it resumes its detail, you know? And this happens so seamlessly in games that we don't even realize. So it's interesting if, like, if you're going to make that happen in VR, I think it's kind of like that. You know how um, uh, Dead, what, what was it called? That's That game that came out and it sucked at first, but it was supposed to be, like, spacefaring. You're supposed to be able to go everywhere, all these, like, uh, different planets and stuff, and... Uh, it's supposed to be like oh. simulated stuff. No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky, right. So, yeah, No Man's Sky, I think it's kind of like that, as like the ga the universe is as far as you've been. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh. <laughs> Which is trippy. 
So, like, if I go up to this rock, I'm going to have my uh, computer start generating while you're reading, like, oh, it must come from here, and blah, blah, blah. It starts just generating a bunch of probable shit, you know what I'm saying? Because you realize, even in our base reality, the only thing that you can know about is now, for sure, and the future and the past are just stories we tell, right? And we can't say, without experiencing it directly, if the you know history definitely happened this way, it's always like an approximation. If we make if we make a likely story based on what we're seeing right now, it might as well be the story of how it got there, right? Hold up, hold up, yo, yo, what the fuck, what the fuck? So you know how we're sitting here talking about virtual worlds? <laughs> what? Man, fuck this shit. So what did I even look up? I looked up. Um, <laughs> I looked up object permanence in digital spatial OS, right? So the problem you're posing has kind of already been solved by spatial OS. I think they highlighted in their Google like 2017 keynote. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, the example that they gave in that video is that video and another video, but I think it's really that Google video was, let's say you drop a sword somewhere specific in this virtual world, you can go and 20, you know, 20 years would have passed in this virtual world, and you can come back and find that same sword right there, which was insane, right? That is and, pretty you know, insane. You know, right. and it, oh, go, 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 go. So this is where it gets gnarly. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and so I scroll up, you know, they, like, I, I, look, uh, I look it up, and, you know, obviously the first five dealt with spatial OS and the documentation of how to actually build that and code that. And then the sixth one, almost the way down, is like inside improbable, the one billion UK startup, um, you know, building a simulation, right? And so I'm like, huh? And I didn't even pay too much attention when I clicked it. And then I start like looking at it and they're like, this is an inside story of an insanely ambitious plan to build virtual worlds, change the way we make decisions, and one day build the matrix. Like, <laughs> I guess we've been pretty uh, good too. <laughs> and they, build, they they have a billion dollars. So it's... What is it called? Maybe I should put it up on the screen. Uh, improbable? I, I haven't even looked it up. Uh, um, you want me to send you like a link? <laughs> That's awesome. You, you said improbable? Yeah. Improbable oh. Spatial OS? Yep, it's the guys who make Spatial OS. Holy shit. Oh, you know, so, oh yeah, which brings me to the point that I'm trying to make. Oh. The, it's two parts, actually, where we are taking this uh, sword art online aspect of being able to teach and grow our AIs in virtual reality, but in virtual reality with humans interacting with them in these cities, in these simulations of cities that we are going to build. Does that make sense? Yeah, I do want to get back to this sword thing that you talked about, like leaving your sword there for 20, I thought that was pretty interesting. But if I was going to do it, if I was going to solve that problem, I wonder if it's something of the it would just be data that I'd keep on the user, you know? I would If someone else came to that spot, I probably wouldn't show them that sword. Like, hmm. I, but, but then that would create a, you know what I'm saying? Like, I keep it, like, if I know in your history that you left a sword there and it's, it's saved in your user history, then I'd, I'd simulate the sword there. But if somebody else comes to that spot, and they don't expect to see one, why should I waste CPU resources? And, you know, this is the reason why, like, we have to be in a simulation already, because that's the same stuff we talk about in uh, quantum theory, quantum mechanics. It's like that expectation, what you expect to see, you know what I'm saying? Is it a wave or is it a particle? <laughs> so it's like... Um, yeah, if I'm not expecting to see a sword there, it's not in my history, why should I see it? It would make no difference to me, right? But if I know that I've seen a sword there before, 
There should be a fucking sword there, and the simulation should just render it. <laughs> True. What I was wondering was, um, uh, there's a word for this. Give me a second. Um, oh, consensus reality. Um, between but the consensus, yeah. How do you create that? <laughs> the consensus reality between multiple observers, you know? Like right. if somebody sees you drop the sword, um, they didn't have it, but they saw it, so does that count? Um, mm -hmm. And it's the difference between having a consensus reality, which everybody kind of knows what's going on on some level. Right. Um, I guess it's if me dropping the sword somehow affects things in your environment. Say, if you're all the way in a different sector of the forest, and I, me leaving a, like dropping my sword here, uh, scares some like fucking deer and goes into your shit. You know, that's like a, a fucking event that is relevant, like that, you know, that couldn't have happened without that sword doing its thing. True. What am I, um, why, what am I kidding myself? It's <laughs> the only way this works is if everything is the same thing. <laughs> Unity. <laughs> <laughs> so it just reacts like it just acts together you know what I'm saying that solves all the problems when we get back to it I don't but I don't feel I don't know how you'd do that in a in a you know in a simulation like how do you program that I'm not sure what the concept Bro. but I know the concept is unity because it, it always is <laughs> you gotta do your homework <laughs> so, the spatial OS for games, the first thing, uh, what do you pay for? The first thing you pay for is uh, persistent entity data. Um, spatial OS stores the state of all entities in your game world in an in-memory scalable cloud database. Pricing is based on the total size of all entities in the world. Mm. Um, but, oh, man, all right. I'm definitely going to start building these cities. Oh, oh, oh yeah, so while I was happy earlier today. Um, yeah, just go to pricing. That is pretty cool. So, so uh, yeah, what can we conclude about this system? I'll look into it, my nigga. Learn it. I definitely looked into it. Um, I definitely like their ideas. Uh, a lot of this stuff, I don't know. I feel like if I really put, <laughs> if I really put my my head to it, I could just solve all the. You know, like it seems really obvious what you do to me, at least to just make somebody believe their environment. You know, um, it's all based on what's known, what should be known, what's should be expected and I, I don't know I, I, that's why I feel like okay we'll just we'll have to just base it on you know a solipsist view <laughs> if, if, if solipsism is true and for viewers out there that's the idea that the only thing that actually exists is yourself and everything else is just like a an emanation from your brain to make you feel like you're having experiences um, then you know you think about how does that how would you make that conclusion valid and then uh, apply that to a simulation um although having multiplayers you know makes that weird but at the same time if you treat really them know. all as one person then why <laughs> it's it's really hard to um, put that, you know, to have, because I would start off with a consensus. Uh, oh, which brings me to the circles. So <laughs> I, I learned quite a bit. Um, and I thought this thing was like floating up and down. No, I thought, I thought my little thing here was hovering, <laughs> but it's not. Um, never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so you, you can have like one consensus reality, but stratify it with the level of awareness that each 
conscious being experiences this reality in. Does that make sense? Like, when you let's start at the top, you can have a consensus reality in which there's one level of awareness that knows about everything. And as you go lower uh, from the top down, so we're starting top down, as you go lower in this pyramid, the less awareness of everything you have, um, which kind of localizes it to your own experiences, right? So when we, you know, have this like bird's eye view of and the knowledge of everything, you can have, you can have uh, knowledge of how different conscious beings interacted with different, um, with different objects in that reality, and 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 how those interactions impacted set object and set individual. When you come down to lower levels of awareness within this virtual space, you can have basically a localized, um, you know, being who has an awareness level that is uh, basically localized to their own self, their actions, and yeah. their actions interacted with without knowing about other conscious beings and the, the although object. although the actual restrictions between the knowledge are virtual you know like there you can know about everything going on in the system with all the users but it's like you to, you it's, know, you're off. restricted there's like certain restrictions you know what i'm saying that yeah. pay us uh, some currency you know some karma. i think I think it'll be really cool, um, you know, the more that we do virtual reality and we think about it, the more we'll learn about ourselves, you know, and our environment. Because there is that, you know, idea that a lot of people believe where, you know, we are all connected to some, um, you know, just collective consciousness. So um, we could probably validate a lot of these things when we're building virtual worlds where we're like, okay, how do we solve these problems about, you know, how do we have a consensus reality, what we expect to see, so I can leave this sword here, someone else can come and find it, and, you know, and it still, it still works, you know, and uh, everybody, so we don't get to a point where the, there's all these errors in the world, you know, someone else leaves another sword there, and now the system has to know, like, Oh, there's two two swords, but one of them belongs to so and so, and the other one belongs. Just show it to one, you know. So if all the histories are together, you know what I'm saying, on some higher level that's not apparent to the users, then things could probably work pretty seamlessly. And and you're like, well, if it works, if it works in virtual reality, why shouldn't it work in base reality? You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> See, no, you're right. See, um, this shouldn't work in base reality, right? Or it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't have a higher uh, enough level of awareness to make that happen in base reality. You know the cool thing about Sword Art Online right now, like the newest mm -hmm. version of it, is their idea of system admin. Um, uh, you know, like if your magic level is high, what they think is magic, it's actually just system admin rights. You know what I'm saying? And so they're casting these spells in the shell. They're like, uh, admin access, blah, blah, blah. They don't know what the fuck that means. And they just think it's some like magic word. It's like, oh, a system admin access, uh, something entity, charge entity, you know? And they're like, oh, it's just like some magic words. We don't, it just, you know, makes magic happen, right? Yeah. That, I thought that concept was so cool that, you know, you could possibly, you know, what if you, that's what, that's what, you know, if magic really exists, maybe that's what it is. When we're saying abracadabra and stuff, it's actually just like uh, a word for admin. <laughs> admin privileges activate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then you just hack into the matrix and you do some stuff. And it's like, oh, well, it's magic. <laughs> so, anyways. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk about before we leave. Um, one was, oh yeah, um, remind me to tell you why I was excited, uh, earlier when you called, and then the second one, uh, fuck, it's eluding me, but the second one was more about us, oh yeah, uh, reality is a reflection of itself, 
um, you can only create from what you already know, in a sense. You know, like, of course, um, of course, some of the things that we will apply to the virtual reality are concepts and understandings that we have of our base reality. Um, of course, you know, and, and the way the way that I've been really building what I've been building is to accommodate for all these. Yeah, I finally figured it out. Uh, so what I wanted to share with you was the concept of uh, synthesis and emergence. Um, so the way I understand synthesis, it's the joining of different actors or different objects. It's the it's it's putting a few ingredients together to create something new. So synthesis, to me, that's what I understand it as. Um, emergence is somewhat uh, a byproduct of the process of synthesizing something. When you put things together, there emerges they emerges a new product, a new experience, you know, so and so and so. Um, to put this in, uh, to give you an example. Um, a, a dish of a certain food is made of different uh, different objects, right? It's the synthesis of these objects that creates the emergent property of, of how, you know, chicken tastes. Uh, you know, like a chicken dish or an Alfredo sauce dish. Uh, I'm really butchering this. But the idea is that um, you have different actors and objects um, in, in whatever environment that is. And you know, they don't have to be relatively smart. They can be dumb, kind of like how you, you know, bringing it back to sort out online, like they don't know what those words mean. So they're relatively dumb to the entirety of the knowledge that they could have, but they, you know, they use that limited knowledge to interact with each other, to create uh, or to synthesize uh, this emergent, you know, this emergent property, um, grows from the synthesis of these uh, separate actors in, in a set environment and it creates this property. So what I'm trying to explain is um, it's in a roundabout way, the circles, <laughs> um, because the circles represent different actors and it's the interaction between these actors that there emerges this, this Experience that you're trying to have. Sure. So, um, what are these circles called? I can put them up for maybe uh, the mind matrix. Wasn't there like a specific name for like the pattern, the specific pattern that you you got into? Um. Well, it has the Vesco Pisces within it. Uh, what is the? Where was it found again? Let me, I'll send it to you on this course. Uh, if I remember, it was like. There was like a list of a bunch of stuff. And then there was like the circle. Yeah, this is like some weird exoteric website we found with a bunch of... Oh, you found it? No. <laughs> so go to... Go to portals, like hover over portals. Okay. And then go all the way to a, grids, a grid worker's journal, preparing for the shift. And oh, then you have to say ascension first. Oh, fuck. oh yeah, the ascension. My bad. I and then go to the the mind matrix, the, the multi dimensional. Um, it's the last one at the bottom. Sorry, it was in the grid workers journal. That's and so that brings you to a link of all these. Um, all those like you can click on you can click on the mind matrix multi dimensional. The uh, and it'll bring you. Uh, do you see it? Because I don't see it. It says Orion Stargate. And, uh, so are you oh, talking the one? Yeah, I'm in the grid workers. Oh, okay. Okay, that one. Okay, 3.5. Don't say grid workers. Journal. 
And you can you can click either one, like the twelve D universe. Uh, click on the twelve D universe actually. Twelve D universe. Okay. Yeah, we talked about. Okay, yeah. So these kind of circles. Uh, yeah. So would you like me to like follow this one or? Each other. Yeah. So you see how they like take. And and that's so cool. We did it so well. Oh, so cool. Um, it literally changed how I'm actually doing my shit significantly. Because remember, I used to have the circles kind of going across. Um, now I shifted them, and they're not going up, uh, which represents chakra. Now it represents like a bunch of different things. But um, there's a specific one that I have that I have it as my background. But this 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 one. Yep, I think we're looking at the same one. Yep, this one is a, it's a pretty good um, description of what, what's kind of going on here. I haven't read this page, so I can't quite vouch for this one yet. But obviously, I'll read it, and I'll let you know. I'll summarize it in, in an interesting way. But the cool thing was that I, you know, they're using it in the same principles that I am using mine. And so you see, the circles are supposed to be ways for you to subdivide larger tasks. Um, it's as simple as I could put it. Like when you when you're encountered with a with a with a body of knowledge or information that you don't quite understand, you break it down into smaller chunks, you group them. And and so, you know, that's kind of what they're doing with the with the base circle, those little tiny circles, all the way ranging up to the larger circles, which just represent a larger awareness to multiple groupings of data. Um, hmm. So how does this have to do with the synthesis stuff that you're talking about? Emergent yeah. properties? Yeah, the synthesis and emergence. And I actually have a document that I wrote about all these things. So um, if I'm sounding like a blabbering fool, just let me know and I'll send it over to you. Um, because it's really it's a really important concept. Well, I, I more for the audience, if, <laughs> you know, yeah. since recording it, uh, to, to kind of like cement what you were saying earlier to this visual. Um, this looks like more to me, I thought, okay, this is like an ascension of awareness, you know, and domain universe is like, okay, your awareness is getting more, uh, like higher to the source of where all knowledge is known, um, and all is one in a sense, you know, and yeah. I like this outside of the universe, the void. How can you be outside? <laughs> I always thought that's hilarious. Let me talk about that. I used to um, think it's where I should exist. <laughs> outside? Yeah, I am separate. Yeah, you should you should talk to Carson about this. Uh, me and him argued for so long. Uh, about he'd be separateness? Like, yeah, he'd be like, come back and be one with everything. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I will be myself. <laughs> 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 That's Especially funny. You have a way bigger ego, <laughs> and you know, over time, I just kind of assimilate, like, assimilate, <laughs> assimilate. <laughs> oh, all right. So, all right. Well, one well, last request. Um, if you hover uh, over portals, the ascension, uh, the mind matrix, and then uh, there's one called it's at the very top called primordial reality. All that is the first one. I can't believe I didn't click on the first one. That, this is actually the one which I have as my background because- Oh yeah, here's the uh, circles that you usually kind of draw. Yeah, so when I saw this, bro, it was literally when I was talking to you and I, I had to confront the truth right in front of me, man. <laughs> and so this, at this point, I just, I had, I had got bombarded with so much um, reinforcements in base reality about about uh, just kind of understanding some things that really um, are complex, but help explain how things are. Um, and and so and so yeah, when I got confronted with this, I was kind of like, okay, cool. Uh, so I kept reading up on this shit. So today, um, so I was talking to Kelsey, right? So uh, for those who don't know, I am starting like a business, a project. 
that is basically in the first phase going to be a personal data management system that allows you to secure and manage the relationship that your personal data has with any entity that is there consumes or creates that you know personal data of you um and so you know i've been kind of ramping up uh really putting down the role requirements the company culture that i want to establish with this uh, organization and all those things but the one thing that i was kind of uh, you know a bit apprehensive that something that i didn't know was how do i go from zero to one how do I go from, you know, not having a prototype to raising money to creating a, a team of people who can then work on this full time? And I needed somebody who can work through that with me. And so uh, I think I kind of mentioned to Kevin, uh, one, of my, one of my friends, uh, her name is Kelsey. Uh, she is a business consultant. She has done a lot of things with startups. Um, and I think she's a really valuable resource and me and her are really good friends. And so we were talking, we met up on Tuesday, but, um, I don't even know if this will go on the final cut, but today we were talking, you know, I was kind of telling her, Hey, this is what I've done so far. This is what I'm going for. And, you know, she was like, Hey, you know, uh, I've been thinking, um, are you looking for anyone to help you with recruiting, with raising money, with going through this whole process? Cause I've seen a lot of startups go through it. Um, I, I've gone through it, um, you know, with a lot of different startups too, and of my own. And so I'd love to help you with this journey, with this, with this process that you are. I was like, oh man, yeah, yeah, I, I need that help. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, I don't know. So is, the ground comes together at your feet <laughs> as you step forward. <laughs> it is pretty cool. That's awesome, man. I'm glad to yeah. see that it's going forward well. So what's the next step? Um, so the next step is uh, I'm basically going to send you this document that goes over the next the plan that I have for the next two months. Um, I've also been working on, you know, really writing down the requirements, primary responsibilities, uh, required qualifications, referred qualifications. Um, she also mentioned like some things such as you know, just focusing on hiring uh, one person who has kind of uh, gone through this, who can then help me hire the rest of the team. Um, you know, focusing my energies on specific directed actions rather than attacking this from a broad um, broad aspect of things, right? So she's, she's really actually really useful because she's gonna help me focus my energies and, and really place those structures uh, in the early stages that will help this become a successful organization. And I'm really, really happy. Um, I'm very thankful to God. Literally, when she said, yeah, you know, I'm, I've been looking for this, I had no other words other than, you know, thank you, God, because, you know, this, this brings me, this is a step closer or multiple steps closer to really uh, manifesting these dreams. Like, she can articulate what I'm trying to do and, 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 you know, she's, she's been in, through the process of raising money, helping startups really um, come to fruition. Um, and, you know, we share things like company culture. We share a lot actually in common together. Um, and so, and so, yeah, I, I think, I think I answered your question, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think uh, from all the research I did, it's really important, I think, it's always about the team more than what you're doing because you know even if you're doing something that sucks uh, a good team will figure out how to figure, how to know that they're that they're sucking early and fix it you know what i'm saying you get you get people who are winners together they don't lose for long so that's awesome definitely a good good place to start um is finding the right people and yeah visualize it follow the path <laughs> up to uh to Where? your desires <laughs> like yeah, with this behind me I, I it's like i'm a uh, vr vr christ <laughs> <laughs> but here, with my halo all right, well, um, I think this is a good place to stop for our first um, yeah. episode. So, this is where we at. Uh, off at sunset. See y'all.